we have a virtual network of three Linux nodes. Node 1 and Node 2 on the same subnet, Node 2 and 3 on a separate subnet, so Node 2 is the router in our internet. And we're going to look at uh, the operation of a simple TCP connection between Node 1 and Node 3. And we want to look at how that connection is set up, how the data is transferred, and uh, the connection is closed. And to do that, we're going to use a client-server application on 1 and 3, and we'll use netcat. NC is the command for short. We've seen it in a previous example using netcat in UDP mode. Now we use it in TCP mode. TCP is the transport protocol. So what we do is we start the netcat server on node 3. And we use NC, short for netcat. And as a server with netcat, we use minus L option to tell it to act as a server and listen on a particular port number. And we can choose a port number. I will choose 12346. We use 12345 in UDP. We could use the same. Uh, generally, it needs to be one larger than 1024 and less than about 65,000. There are some exceptions if the port number is already in use. But this will start Netcat as a server and it automatically starts or by default starts in TCP mode. So this will start in TCP mode. If we want UDP mode, we add the minus U option. But we want TCP, so we don't need any other options. We start the Netcat server. Now, we're going to capture the communications between client and server. So let's start capturing now on the router using TCP dump. We want to capture on interface ETH1. We don't want to convert IP addresses to domain names, and we want to write to a file. Let's call it nctcp1.pcap. And the password is network. So now we're recording everything that goes through node 2. So now we'll start the client on node 1. And that should connect to the server on node 3. And the packets involved in that connection setup should be captured. And then we'll exchange some data. To start the client on node 1, we use netcat. In client mode, we specify the address of the server. 192.168.2.21 is node 3. And the port number used by the server, the one we chose on node 3. We connect. And now what we type can be sent. So, hello, node 3. And let's just see... As we type on the client, the text is sent to node 3 and displayed. Here is my, my new secret, if I can spell. We're trying to send a secret across the network, across the internet, from node 1 to node 3. We don't want anyone else to see that secret. Uh, and then we say goodbye. So there was some data exchange between node 1 and node 3. And we can close the connection. And what we'll do on node 1 is I'll press Control D. Control D gracefully closes that connection. And you see that the server automatically closed as well. Notice when we use UDP mode, we had to separately close the server and client. But with TCP, because TCP creates its own connection, if we close one endpoint, it will automatically close the other endpoint. Let's stop our capture. Control C to stop our capture on node 2. There were 18 packets captured. We have our capture file on node 2. So what we want to do is use FileZilla to copy that to my Windows host and then we'll look at it in Wireshark. I'll connect to node 2. Download the capture file. And now I'll open that capture file in Wireshark. Here we see the captured packets. There are 18 packets. Note that a few of them are ARP packets. Let's just focus on the TCP packets. So let's filter out and show just the TCP packets. I'll type as a filter TCP. And let's have a brief run through of those remaining 14 TCP packets and see the basics of how TCP works. 
Remember what we did is we sent really four separate messages from client to server. I typed in four lines and we'll see in a moment that that correspond to four messages being sent. TCP, unlike UDP, creates a connection before we transfer any data. So we look at the very first packet sent from node one to node three, client to server. There's many details about the TCP segment but let's just focus on these uh, values in the, the square brackets because they summarize the meaning of this TCP segment. In TCP header, there's a, a series of flags. And if one of those flags is set, then the, the meaning, uh, or then, then that segment has a particular meaning or purpose. And really we refer to it as some named segment. So in this first TCP segment, the SYN flag is set. Really, we think of this segment as a SYN segment. SYN, or S-Y-N, is short for synchronize. The idea in TCP is that before we transfer data, we set up a connection. And one aspect of setting up that connection is synchronizing some sequence numbers we're going to use in the data transfer. So this very first segment we see is the, let's, is the client saying to server, Let's synchronize our sequence numbers to set up a connection. We'll look at the details of the segment in a moment, but let's just go through the next few. Frame number two is a TCP segment from server back to client, so it's a response. And note the SYN flag is set, so it's also a SYN segment. It's the server saying to the client, yes, let's, or it's saying, let's synchronize the sequence numbers in this direction of communications. We'll see shortly when we set up a TCP connection, we can send data in both directions, client to server, server to client. So we actually use independent sequence numbers for each direction. So this second frame is the server telling the client, let's synchronize sequence numbers. Really it proposes an initial sequence number. But we also see that this second TCP segment has a second purpose. It's an ACK or an acknowledgement segment. And the ACK is saying, I acknowledge the SYN segment that you just sent me. So segment one, client sends a synchronized segment to the server. Segment two, the server sends a synchronized segment back to the client and that segment was also acknowledging the first SYN received. The third segment is from the client to the server and it's the client acknowledging the SYN received from the server. And these first three segments are commonly seen in the setting up of a connection in TCP. We see a SYN, a SYNAC and an ACK. Let's try and illustrate that. We have uh, node 1 communicating with node 3. We will not draw node 2, the router, even though the messages go via the router. We'll focus on the, the client and server. So we have some setup of a connection where we involve sending a SYN segment from client to server saying I want to synchronize sequence numbers. The server sends back an ACK saying thank you for that SYN segment. I agree with the value you proposed. But it also sends its own SYN segment proposing its own. Sometimes we write SYN plus ACK. This second segment has two purposes. Acknowledge the first and propose a new initial sequence number for the direction of communications from client to server. Then the third is the client saying, I acknowledge the SYN that you just sent me. This is uh, the TCP connection setup, sometimes referred to as a three-way handshake. It takes three steps to agree upon those values. And at that point, we say the TCP connection is set up between client and server, and now we can start transferring data. Let's go back to Wireshark and look at the 
the next segment. From client to server, PSH is short for push. And in this case, we'll common, commonly see the push segment, meaning uh, send the data in this segment directly to the application as fast as possible. Uh, maybe the simplest way to interpret it or to, uh, in, in this case is that this segment contains data. And the best way to confirm that, if we look inside the segment, we have the Ethernet header, IP header, TCP header, and then the actual data. And we see down in the, the hexadecimal or the binary, uh, the ASCII interpretation of that data, those 12 bytes, is the message that I typed in, hello node 3. So this is the actual data segment. Uh, it uses the push flag, but what I interpret this segment as is one containing data. And when I draw it, I'll illustrate that. So there we have a segment going from client to server, and that segment contains data. And the data in this case was the data1. Uh, I'll just type data1. But it was a hello node, what I typed in, hello node3. Coming back to Wireshark, note that that data segment also contains an ACK. And this can get a bit confusing. And in fact, if we look through all the subsequent segments, there are ACKs included. And we normally interpret the ACK as saying, thank you for the previous segment you sent me. I now expect some more. Well, uh, it's common that in a TCP implementation, we'll ACK every segment. And uh, just to confirm that we've already received the previous one, uh, even in this case, we haven't received any data yet. We still send an ACK. It takes a, a lot more time to explain how the acknowledgement numbers and sequence numbers work. You, you need to study TCP and flow control and congestion control to get the details of that. But for now, we'll interpret this, this fourth segment in our list as a data segment. It contained hello node 3, or the first piece of data. The next segment, from server to client, does not contain any data. We see in Wireshark there's no data field, there's no push segment. It's just an ACK. And this is saying from the server, thank you for the data you just sent me. I now expect some more. So if we draw that, this is an ACK coming back. There's no data in this segment, it's just a small segment acknowledging the previous data received. And then it continues. The next segment, from client to server, more data. Here is my new secret, then an ACK. Data containing the password, and then an ACK. Data, ACK. I'll just draw one of those. Not all four, I'll just draw a second one. Let's say data two, the second piece of data, whatever it was, and then that was acknowledged as well. And we can continue in, uh, as we've got data to, to exchange. And although this example doesn't show, we can be sending data in the direction from client to, uh, from server to client. TCP allows data to go in both directions. Doesn't matter who sets up the connection. The last three segments. Remember, I press Control D on the client, and that triggers the client to initiate the closing of the connection. 
and there's a special fin segment to say I want to finish the connection. The client says I want to finish. The service says I acknowledge that and I want to finish as well. And then the client also finally acknowledges the fin that was sent. And we'll draw that. We can think that there's fin segment saying the client wants to finish. And it's quite unique in that TCP, uh, what can actually happen, one side of the, uh, the parties communicating can finish and close the connection while the other side can still be sending data. It could be open. So you need to actually finish from both sides. So the response back was to acknowledge that finish message and for the server to say, let's finish from my side as well. And the last segment we saw in there was the client sending to the server, I acknowledge the fin segment you just sent me. This is closing the connection. You'll often see this, this typical exchange. Of course, you may see different uh, amounts of data in between the set, uh, the three-way handshake and closing connection. Uh, but that's a, a typical uh, series of, of packets you may see. Let's, to finish, just go and look at some of those TCP segments in a bit more depth. Uh, first, let's, for example, choose the SYN segment uh, and just look at the TCP header. And I'll make a bit more space here. What does the TCP header contain? Uh, some of the things of importance, the source port, the port number assigned to the client application, destination port for the server application, a sequence number, an acknowledgement number, a few other fields, the flags, uh, one bit values. In this case, the SYN flag was set to one, meaning this is a SYN segment. There was no data in this case. In the second segment, if we look at the flags, both the acknowledgement flag was set and the SINs flag was set. They're just one bit values, meaning this segment has two purposes. It's both acknowledging the previous segment and synchronizing uh, a sequence number. And in data, the push flag is set and we actually see the data inside that segment. So that's a, a quick illustration of how TCP works. We see the connection set up, we see the data transfer, and the close of the connection. And you'll commonly see those exchanges when you capture other applications which use TCP. And the way that we triggered that, if we bring it up on the server, we ran netcat in TCP mode and as a server using the minus L option and choosing a port number while at the client we ran it in client mode by specifying the address of the server both IP and port number.